In Anne Arundel County, the Beverly Beach Club and its neighbor, Triton Beach, were once popular resorts that attracted thousands of vacationers each summer. People came to swim, gamble, dance, and spend summers with friends and family. Today, all that's left are these eroding jetties disappearing into the Chesapeake Bay. Nearby, a more ancient history is being lost to coastal erosion. This Native American shell heat marks the spot where people camped and shucked oysters almost 1,500 years ago. But the site is rapidly eroding. These middle school students are helping archaeologists learn more about the ancient people who once lived here before the site is lost forever. It enhances the knowledge of their students' local history so much. This is an area that's in the backyard of most of the students, and what they don't know is the deep history that is rooted here. These children, working alongside archaeologists, can discover tangible links to a long-forgotten history. Rico Newman, a member of the Choptico Band of the Piscataway Kanoi Tribe of Maryland, has also worked with archaeologists to reveal how his ancestors lived along the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, what is in uh, the coastal area that makes it a, more or less a, uh, a market place uh, for native people. You know, what did you want? You want shellfish, you want uh, fin fish, you want uh, uh, birds. Uh, they're all going to come here to, this, uh, to the edge of the, the sea. Where it, it just shows just how much diversity it was between native communities and how far they would travel uh, from the Great Lakes region, from the Mississippi region, from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, to these areas. So there was a lot of interchange in cultures and we learn all of this from the work that archaeologists do. Archaeologists all across Maryland are working on the problem of disappearing coastal sites. Darren Lowry took this photo of an early 19th century well that once served a farm on Parsons Island, now lost to erosion. You know, shorelines are interesting because not what I've learned is that like people there's no shoreline that's identical to another. So they're unique, they have their own unique geometries, they have their own unique exposure to wind and wave activity, they have their own unique exposures to bathymetry, the depth of the water. So my, what I've been able to see by exploring a lot of the shorelines on the Eastern Shore is that there are sites that are heavily eroded, that have disappeared in my lifetime, and then there are sites that are still with us and haven't changed one iota in, uh, I guess it would be 30 some years. A lot of the work I've done in recent years, over the last decade, has been in Virginia, on the lower end of the peninsula. Uh, and uh, when I started those projects, my goal was to, was twofold. One, to document the sites, any new sites, but also to give them an idea of which ones are most eroded. Um, I was able to tell the, the state of Virginia, hey, these sites that I recorded years ago, of these sites, this sample is still around, they're eroding at this rate, and then here's a new batch that has come into the picture. An innovative Calvert County project recently brought the public and private sectors together to survey and document coastal sites threatened by climate change. We surveyed the creek by canoeing uh, along the shoreline. Um, we identified any previously recorded sites as well as looking for new sites as well. Um, and in that way we were able to record 13 new archaeological sites on Battle Creek and then uh, I think it was eight new sites on, um, on uh, Hunting Creek. On Battle Creek where the Archaeological Society of Maryland this year did a survey of Calverton which is the, the seat of county government in Calvert County during the 17th century. It also represented the only time that we've ever been able to subject that what is arguably the most significant historical archaeological site in Calvert County to systematic survey. This was really, I thought, really a good way of doing it. So you, you've only got a finite amount of resources, a finite, finite amount of money, there's a finite amount of time, and a finite amount of um, goodwill as well for these type of projects. Jen Sparenberg, the Hazard Mitigation Officer at the Maryland Historical Trust, oversaw this Calvert County project, as well as projects all across the state. She has witnessed the degradation of thousands of archaeological sites. Really, they're endangered by natural hazards and all of these changes that we're going to start to see with the climate and that we're seeing now, like drought, um, migrating flora and fauna, 
coastal erosion, increased flooding, and um, increased more intensive coastal storms. We need to, I think, also look more broadly beyond coastal erosion and sea level rise and understand that um, when these more intense storms happen, they're also going to be happening in areas that are subject to riverine flooding. So you're going to have bank erosion and overland flooding over areas that are riverine floodplains that may not be experiencing sea level rise, but they nonetheless will be experiencing these more frequent intense storms, like the flood event that happened in Ellicott City. Fortunately, there weren't any archeological sites impacted by that. But if you think about a storm of that magnitude, um, like blowing through Battle Creek or something, then it, it might be an entirely different story. Protecting the resort ruins and the Native American site at Beverly Triton Beach Park is the responsibility of Ranger Karen Jarbo. Absolutely, I try to work a little bit of climate change into every program we do. <laughs> and um, just to educate people because it's real and it's happening and there are things we can do and if we start now, then, um, then hopefully we'll be able to change our future. So there's, there's breakers out here that um, th there's only a small gap in between, so certainly that's gonna slow down the erosion and um, on the wave action, but it also helps to sort of collect that sand. Part of what we're trying to do is advertise that, that there is such an interesting cultural history right here and, and to excavate it and to look at it and record it before it's all washed away. This is something that we should all care about. Um, I keep remembering years ago there was a, a national poll and it seems that something, some astronomical percentage of the American public really thinks that archaeological sites are all protected by law. Right. And we know yeah, that they're okay, not. Right. That expectation hasn't been met either in, on the local level or even the federal, or the federal level. So it's, it's incumbent on all of us as right. citizens to address that through our local officials. We know that people have lived in Maryland for at least 12,000 years, and archaeologists have only discovered a small portion of that history. If you want to help discover this history in your community before it washes away, get involved with organizations like the Lost Towns Project or the Archaeological Society of Maryland to volunteer and learn more about rich local history. We cannot stop rising sea levels, eroding coast, and storm surge, but we do not have to stand by and watch history vanish into the water.